If you looked only at the last eight hours around Naples, you could almost convince yourself that Campi Flagre is settling down. Just a handful of tiny earthquakes. No ash. No dramatic headlines. Morning coffee in Pozzuoli still shakes less than the news feed. Here's the important part. This is exactly what a long volcanic crisis looks like from the inside. Not one big explosion, a slow, relentless background noise that never really goes away. In the past 24 hours, seismic networks have picked up seven small quakes under the Campi Flegre caldera, all of them in the very low range, roughly between magnitude 0.1 and 3.0. One of the most recent ones was almost invisible on the global scales about magnitude 0.3 around 2 o'clock in the morning, local time in Italy, roughly 10 to 11 kilometers west of Naples. That is right inside the restless bowl of Campi Flegre. Most people slept straight through it. No damage, no alarms, no change in the official alert level. And that is exactly why scientists are still watching it so closely. Because when you zoom out beyond those eight quiet hours, a different picture comes into focus. The same instruments that recorded just seven tiny quakes today have been logging long chains of micro-earthquakes for weeks. Italian media have talked about new seismic swarms in Pozzuoli more than once this winter. Weekly bulletins from the observatory list dozens, sometimes over a hundred small shocks in seven days, on top of steady ground, uplift of around 25 millimeters a month. All of that is happening in a volcanic field surrounded by dense suburbs, highways, harbors, and the historic center of Naples. So tonight's update is not about a spectacular explosion. It is about something more uncomfortable for anyone living there or watching from abroad, a volcano that can spend eight hours behaving politely on the surface while the deeper system continues to move press and adjust. In the next part of this update, we will step back from those seven tiny quakes and look at the bigger pattern, why Campi Flagre remains on a yellow alert, what ongoing unrest really means in practical terms for people in Naples and Pozzuoli, and why a day without big headlines is not the same as a return to safety. If you only look at the last eight hours, Campi Flegre seems almost polite. Seven tiny quakes in a whole day, one of them so small, about magnitude 0.3 at 2 o'clock in the morning, that most seismologists would call it a micro-event. No damage, no panic, no change of alert level. Here's the important part. Those few quiet hours sit on top of months of unrest. When you zoom out from one night to a few weeks, the numbers change. Italian monitoring sites show that on the 21st of December, there were still small quakes around Solfatara di Pozzuoli. Late in November, an INGV weekly bulletin counted 137 earthquakes in just seven days, with the largest around magnitude 3.3. At the same time, the ground under Pozzuoli was rising at roughly 25 millimeters a month. That slow heave of the crust has a name in Italy, Bradyseism. It is the long, slow heartbeat behind the short spikes in the news. This is not a brand new crisis that flared up yesterday. Campi Flagre has been in a state of unrest since 2005. Over those 20 years, the ground in some parts of the caldera has risen by more than a meter and a half. Swarms of small earthquakes, Siami Sismici, have come and gone. Local newspapers like Mitzaito.it and Virgilio have described new swarms near Pozzuoli more than once, with more than 20 quakes in a cluster, and magnitudes around 2.2 shallow enough that people could feel the jolts in their kitchens and shops even when nothing broke. That is why the official alert has not gone back to green. Italy's Civil Protection Department keeps Campi Flagre at yellow alert phase two. Attenzione. In plain language, that means the volcano is not in normal conditions and we are acting as if something more could happen. Yellow is tied to a whole package of measures intensified, monitoring by the Vesuvius Observatory, updated hazard models, reviews of evacuation plans, training and drills more communication with local authorities and residents. In October 2025, Civil Protection even issued a new framework of operational phases designed specifically for this caldera, because the risk is too complex to treat like an ordinary mountain in the countryside. So when you hear seven small earthquakes in 24 hours, it is tempting to breathe out and think the danger is fading. From the point of view of the scientists and emergency planners, those seven quakes are just one tiny slice of a much longer film. In the next part of this update, we will put those quiet hours into the human landscape, what this long yellow phase means for people living in Naples and Pozzoli, how it shapes daily life under a restless caldera, 
and why getting used to small tremors can be just as risky as being afraid of every headline. If you do not live there, Campy Flagre is a headline that comes and goes. A push alert on your phone, a short clip of shaking lamps or cracked walls. Then the news moves on. If you live in Pozzuoli or in the western neighborhoods of Naples, it is something very different. It is waking up to another day with the alert color set to yellow. It is seeing the same volcano banner on the city website. It is hearing that there were only a few small quakes last night and trying to decide what that actually means for your family. Here is the important part. For the people on the caldera, unrest is not a special event. It has become the background of everyday life. Shops open, children go to school, ferries come and go across the Bay of Naples. On most days, the only sign of the volcano are the fumaroles at Solfatara, a faint smell of sulfur on some mornings, and the headlines that flare up when a swarm of quakes is strong enough to rattle windows. The rest of the time, the crisis hides in numbers. 137 earthquakes in a week on a bulletin, 25 millimeters of uplift in a month on a graph, more than one meter and a half of total rise since 2005 in a technical report that few people ever read from start to finish. For many residents, that slow build has created what you could call a new normal. They are used to feeling a light jolt now and then. They are used to reading words like Brady Seism and Seismic Swarm. They are used to seeing experts on television explaining that the level remains yellow, that there is no immediate sign of an eruption, that monitoring is intense and continuous. After 20 years of hearing this message, it is human nature to start treating it like background noise. And that is where the risk quietly grows. Yellow is not a comfort color. It does not mean relax, everything is fine. It means pay attention while there is still time to prepare without panic. Civil protection has built a specific framework for Campi Flagre because the stakes are so high. Evacuation routes have been studied. Operational phases have been defined. Local authorities run drills and update plans. But plans on paper only work if people take them seriously on quiet days not just when a big shock finally hits. So a day with seven tiny earthquakes and no damage carries a double message. Scientifically, it tells us that the volcano is still in a long phase of unrest, but has not crossed into a sudden explosive escalation. Socially, it asks a harder question. Are people using this relative calm to learn where their safe routes are, which official channels to follow, how to respond if the alert color ever changes, or are they slowly turning down the volume in their heads because the danger has been around for so long. In the next part of this update, we will look at the other side of the story, how scientists are trying to read these weak signals with better tools, what the weekly bulletins and new emergency frameworks can and cannot promise, and what it really means to live beside a volcano that may stay restless for years rather than for days. From the outside, it can sound simple. Scientists have instruments. Instruments see earthquakes and ground uplift. So why not just tell people exactly what will happen and when? Here's the important part. At Campi Flagre, science is very good at reading the long story, but it is still limited when it comes to the exact next chapter. Today, the monitoring network around the caldera is one of the most dense in Europe. Seismometers count every tiny jolt. GNSS stations measure how many millimeters the ground has risen month by month. Gas sensors track changes in the hot fluids that rise through Solfatara and the surrounding fields. Weekly bulletins add up the numbers. One week, there are 137 earthquakes. Another week, the maximum magnitude is 3.3. Over a full year, the ground at Pozzuoli lifts by around 25 millimeters, and over two decades, it has climbed more than one and a half meters. All of that tells scientists something very clear. The system is not in a quiet, stable state. It is under pressure. In the last months, researchers have gone one step further. New models combine earthquake sequences with ground deformation data from high-precision GNSS to see how seismicity responds when the crust stretches or bends. Early results suggest that when the ground uplifts faster, small quakes often follow with a delay of several days. In simple terms, the crust around Campi Flagre seems to react to being pushed and pulled like an old building that creaks more loudly after you lean on it. But this is where the limits come in. These models are still proofs of concept. They can improve short-term forecasts of how many small earthquakes might occur after a change in deformation. They cannot yet say with confidence, there will be a large eruption on this date, or there will definitely not be one in the next year. The physics of magma gas rock strength and faults under a crowded caldera 
is complex. Some signals that look similar in the data can lead to very different outcomes on the surface. A surge in small tremors might end as a swarm and nothing more. The same level of tremor in a slightly different part of the system might be a first step towards something larger. So scientists and civil protection officials choose their words carefully. They can say that the alert level remains yellow because the ground is still rising, the gas system is still hot, and the earthquakes are still more frequent than in a truly quiet period. They can say that there is no sign of an imminent major eruption in the next hours or days. They can say that the risk of felt earthquakes and minor damage remains real. What they cannot honestly do is promise that Campi Flagre will stay at this same level of unrest for the next decade or guarantee that a given swarm will never escalate. For people living on the caldera or watching from abroad, that mix of knowledge and uncertainty can be uncomfortable. It means accepting two ideas at once. First, that scientists are watching this system much more closely than in past crises with better tools and more data than ever before. Second, that even with those tools, there will never be a single perfect alarm bell that rings only once five days before a big eruption and never at any other time. In the next part of this update, we will step out of the data room and back into daily life. We will talk about how you should read a yellow day at Campi Flagre, what to do with weeks that bring only tiny quakes and no headlines, and how to find a balance between unhealthy fear and dangerous indifference if you live near this caldera or simply care about the people who do. For people who do not live in Italy, Campi Flagre is a name that appears only when something shakes hard enough to make the international news. For the people who see that caldera from their kitchen window, it is part of every ordinary Tuesday. Here is the important part. If you live with a restless volcano, the goal is not to be afraid every day. The goal is to be ready on the quiet days so that you do not have to improvise on the loud ones. On a yellow day like today, with just a few tiny earthquakes and no visible eruption, the first step is simple. Know your official sources before you need them. That means knowing where to find updates from the Vesuvius Observatory of INGV, from civil protection, and from your regional or city authorities. It means saving those websites and channels on your phone so that when something happens, you are not hunting through social media feeds that mix expert information with pure speculation. The second step is to quietly map your own life onto the hazard map. If you live in Pozzuoli or the Western Districts of Naples, ask yourself very practical questions. Which zone are you in on the official emergency plans? Which roads are expected to carry evacuation traffic if the alert level ever rises? Does your home, your workplace, or your children's school sit in an area that has been affected by ash or ground cracks in past crises? You do not need to become a geologist to answer these questions. You just need to spend one calm evening reading the material that civil protection has already prepared instead of waiting to open it for the first time when everyone is rushing at once. The third step is to prepare small, boring things that make a huge difference in a real emergency. Keep copies of key documents where you can grab them quickly. Know which medicines your family would need for a few days away from home and keep a small supply ready. Decide in advance where your family would meet if you were separated when an alert changed. These are the kinds of tasks that feel unnecessary on a day with only magnitude zero point something earthquakes. They are also the tasks that remove panic from the moment when you are asked to leave an area quickly. For those who watch Campi Flagre from far away, the challenge is different but connected. It is easy to let every headline swing you between two extremes. Either you think nothing serious will ever happen because you have heard about unrest for 20 years, or you feel as if a disaster could explode without warning at any second. Neither of these views matches what the data or the scientists actually say. The reality sits in the middle. The caldera is under long-term stress. The alert level is yellow for a reason. There is no sign of an imminent major eruption tonight. There is also no guarantee that the current pattern will stay frozen forever. And this is where it really matters. Respect grows out of understanding. Panic grows out of surprise. If you live near Campi Flegre, a day with seven tiny quakes and a calm sky is not a reason to forget the volcano. It is a window of time to learn its signals, to understand what yellow really means, and to practice the small steps that make a difference if the color ever changes. If you follow this story from Germany, the United Kingdom, the United States, Canada, or anywhere else, 
Days like today are a chance to learn how a modern volcanic crisis is managed long before any dramatic footage appears on your screen. If you want clear, calm updates whenever Campi Flegrai, Vesuvius Etna, or any other volcano changes its behavior, and whenever flood storms or earthquakes begin to reshape the map, consider subscribing to this channel and turning on notifications so that you do not miss the next update. And tell us in the comments how you would feel living with a yellow alert as your daily background. Would it fade into normal life for you, or would you use this quiet time to prepare while the ground is still only whispering instead of shouting?